since I, I left training is um, working on pregnancy outcomes in women with lupus um, because for a long time the, the outcomes had been relatively poor and a lot of women were advised to not become pregnant because of their lupus and this was obviously very disappointing for many women who really desperately wanted children and so I've been working to help identify clinical markers that may a risk stratify women into high risk uh, for pregnancy complications as well as even more importantly low risk for pregnancy complications so that it can we can tell them yes you probably will have a relatively uncomplicated pregnancy or your risk of having a complication is low relative to the general population. One of the key risk factors for a complicated pregnancy is active disease prior to conception. And so we work very, very hard in a woman who is anticipating or planning to become pregnant or desires to become pregnant to really work on getting the disease as quiescent as possible for about six months prior to conception. And that also requires often switching around medications that may be harmful to a pregnancy. But making sure that we do use enough medication during pregnancy to ensure maximal disease control because we've really found that active maternal disease is probably the biggest risk factor to a pregnancy complication rather than in particular medicines in a lot of cases. In the beginning or earlier on in my career, my training, women were, were recommended to stop medications in anticipation of a pregnancy and particularly hydroxychloroquine. There was concern about eye toxicity and ear toxicity in offspring and so they were told specifically to discontinue it if they were planning a pregnancy or if they had uh, discovered a pregnancy. And now we are a completely 180 degrees on that and we are actually recommending that women continue their Plaquenil and even women with lupus who are anticipating pregnancy, we recommend they start Plaquenil if they're not already on it, because there have been a myriad of studies now that have shown numerous benefits to pregnancy um, in women who have lupus and maintain, on, maintain hydroxychloroquine use. When we think about particular medicines, is really more shifted towards actively treating active inflammatory disease in the mom and understanding which medicines are the most compatible with pregnancy and using those safely rather than stopping all therapies be just because of a pregnancy. I think we're beginning to learn because we're, we're watching how, these, how the immunology of pregnancy and the immunology of lupus interact, we may be able to come up with unique treatments um, for diseases of pregnancy like preeclampsia that may actually come from our study of lupus and pregnancy but may actually apply to pregnant women in general who may face these disorders um, even if they're unrelated to lupus. One of the things that I'm now looking at, um, and, and most of the data or most of the research in pregnancy has been on late pregnancy losses, which are devastating, absolutely, there's no question. Preeclampsia, uh, stillbirth, late fetal losses are very devastating. But now I'm actually trying to look earlier in pregnancy and see is there a correlation with, with recurrent miscarriage in our patients that may be immunologically based, and this is well before pregnancy is in the second, third, and fourth trimester, and we often say, because miscarriage can be so common, we often discount and say, well, if these things happen. But if we can identify certain women for whom there's an immunologic base for this to happen, there may be a, inter, there's a chance to intervene. And, and these losses, even if they're early in pregnancy, are very devastating to women and their families, and they take a big toll. So to be able to, to make an impact throughout pregnancy um, in women who really desire to have children is a big goal of mine.